All right. There we go. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all. Um, uh, welcome. So this morning we have um, uh, a couple of project reports to hear about after the usual Hackfest planning discussion. Um, and then we have, uh, I think we can um, discuss the update that Tracy provided to us on the work group reporting um, proposal. <clears throat> Pardon me. And um, Tracy's not on, but we can, you know, we can discuss and she can listen to the recording after the fact and um, update uh, accordingly. So is there anything else for the agenda? If not, um, Todd, you want to kick it off? Yeah, sure thing. So before we go into the Hackfest, um, I just want to make everyone aware, uh, earlier this week we announced uh, the flagship event for Hyperledger. We're calling it Hyperledger Global Forum. This will be December 12th and 12th through 15th in Basel, Switzerland. So I'm dropping all the information into Rocket Chat now. Uh, but this is a large conference to pull together the entire Hyperledger ecosystem. So this will be a mix of both um, business focused as well as technical focused tracks. Uh, we expect over a thousand attendees at this. Uh, so please have a look at that, mark that off on your calendars, and we hope to see many of you at that event. I imagine there'll be an expo yep. for vendors. Yeah. Yep, large exposition hall, a uh, ton of sponsorship opportunities for any companies uh, looking to sponsor mm -hmm. there. Uh, if you have any questions on that, uh, I'll drop a few of the details in here um, into the minutes that go out after this call. Super, thank you. All right, and then uh, next, um, Los Angeles. So here's the registration link again for that, uh, February 20th to 22nd. Uh, the uh, two things we want to cover in this call, um, and Tracy's not on, so I'll just walk through this. Here's the draft agenda uh, that we've pulled together. So one, uh, from the feedback last week, we restructured the day zero training day. Uh, really, the idea is uh, that'll kick off the first half of the day up till lunch will be kind of a welcome overview, whatnot, from Brian and Tracy uh, at a top level, the umbrella strategy, and then uh, quick lightning talks from each one of the nine projects. Uh, then everyone will break for lunch. After that, uh, folks will come back and sort of self-select on how they want to get their dev environment set up, whether they want to focus on... Uh, contributing to the various projects, writing applications or whatnot. And so we'll have various breakouts for that. So the, the two things we need are one, um, does this format look okay? Any last tweaks to it? And then two, uh, if you are um, one of the project maintainers or heavily involved in those and going to be there on the 20th, um, please drop your name in where it says need volunteer. So any, so number one, any concerns to this format? I think Todd, the only thing that I see that's sort of missing is a discussion of any of the, of the work groups. And I wonder if um, we might want to have sort of a lunch and learn and maybe the work group chairs that are there, if any can talk about their respective work groups. That, that's a great suggestion. I'll add that in the comments. Uh, and just chat with Tracy on that as well. Again, I don't know who's um, planning to attend, but I think I recall Hart saying he was going to come. Um, and I guess it doesn't have to be <laughs> either if they're not there, but certainly um, I think it would be good to cover the work groups as well. Yep. That's a great suggestion. Uh, any other questions or concerns on format? All right. Uh, for those uh, on the projects, please get your names dropped in there. Otherwise, Tracy is going to come uh, track you down and work on signups for that. Uh, and if we don't have representation for one of the projects, um, we just won't be able to cover it. Um, but we'll do so at a future Hackfest. 
otherwise, beyond that, uh, everything remains the same. Hope to have Dubai confirmed soon. Um, and then Amsterdam is confirmed June 27th to 29th. Registration will be live by Wednesday of next week. So you'll be able to sign up for that um, starting in the DSC call next week. Uh, that's all on Hackfest and uh, Eventfront. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Um, project reporting. So first up is Sawtooth. Dan, are you there? And yes, I am. Awesome. I will copy this. And I put it in two definitely six. managed to get this report put together last night before bed. <laughs> And cool. then remembered this morning that we've got four more repos that I'd forgotten about. So <laughs> I, okay. I think I pulled in stats from everything. But um, so uh, the I think the short version of this is that Sawtooth is very active. It's very healthy. Uh, we're continuing to move forward, and uh, we're all driving towards our 1.0 release, which is a pretty big deal for. Uh, for all the, the Sawtooth maintainers and contributors. So we're, we're pretty uh, both tired and excited approaching this. Um, there's always a surprising number of loose ends to tie up as you approach a release, but pretty happy with how things are shaping up. Uh, part of that process has been uh, over the last several months that we've been expanding what we do in CI so that things that are going into the 1.0 branch go through an extended period of, of testing uh, and we keep the, the network, uh, we keep a test network up for a, a number of days under load so that we can shake loose problems that wouldn't pop up during unit testing or briefer integration testing. From um, from kind of a project organizational perspective, we did uh, some structural stuff with the code where we broke things out into a couple more repos, uh, but largely those have been long applications to, to make the applications independent of the core code. Uh, it's kind of in favor of splitting out some of the SDKs into separate repos, but uh, the prevailing viewpoint from from the uh, the rest of the maintainers was preference to keep that in lockstep with core so we don't have version mismatch stuff with the SDKs. So those continue to be in there. But among these applications that we split out, I, I highlighted a few in the report here, which are a role-based access control system that that is uh, sort of an extension of the permissioning rules that we've included in the, the sawtooth design. Uh, most of that is uh, the application level, so there's there's hooks within within the core code itself. But uh, the way to interface with with Sawtooth to configure that for whatever your consortia or enterprise needs are out at uh, application level APIs. Uh, supply chain uh, we showed off in uh, a previous TSC meeting, but that shows telemetry of things as they go through uh, transit, for example. And then we also had a uh, block explorer application donated uh, by, by Pocketoc, who uh, needed a UI for uh, some of the things that they're doing, and we're glad to have them contribute that back, uh, just like uh, how T-Mobile contributed back the, the uh, hyperdirectory application. As we approach uh, 1.0 for uh, our current plans, there's there's going to be all the the marketing drive that that the Linux Foundation uh, supports us with, which is fantastic. And so I've left off most of the details of what the 1.0 features are, knowing that we're going to have a nice campaign about that. And then also noted that that some of us have already started to move on to 1.1 thinking. And uh, uh, probably get into to details in that in, in next quarter's report. Uh, as far as community health, the not really any change in the maintainer population. We, we did uh, see some of uh, 
or maybe we've adopted some of the the IBM strategy here of, of letting companies poach off a couple of the 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 folks from Intel, and so that's going to give us a little bit more uh, diversity. But but the actual people involved are are basically the same over this last quarter. I don't think that's an actual strategy, but <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice now try. I feel like I should have followed that. <laughs> nice try, though. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, contributor diversity, on the other hand, we have seen some uptick in that. Uh, in general, <clears throat> that has been, I think, from the EDX course is, has driven a lot more interest and a lot more questions out to chat and then subsequently commits for uh bugs and stock fixes and stuff so that's been great and then uh we also see interest in uh seth the the uh sawtooth ethereum collaboration with with uh hyperledger borough and then of course uh, as we approach the release that's also been driving more interest in sawtooth so those have all helped i think increase the the uh committer traction here and so I mentioned the the EDX course and and seeing some increased interest and I, I think I may have mentioned that in our last update. The downside that I saved for the end is that uh, I think the, the the maintainers in general uh, do not feel connected to that EDX material, and we often get questions out on chat that are based on that material but most of us aren't familiar with it. So I think there's a, a couple problems there that might be worth discussing. One is just, you know, simply the, the maintainers taking time to go out and go through that material is, is one thing, but uh, from, from several of their perspectives, that, that material kind of was put together without a whole lot of their involvement. And, and so there's at least a, a feeling of, of disconnect there. So I don't know if, if any of the other projects have similar uh, experience or, or similar opinions of that, but that, that does feel like a, a bit of an issue within within the, the sawtooth maintainers. <clears throat> okay, well, not, not hearing any reaction to that. I, I don't know if that's uh, uh, the absence of that means that that's a, a sawtooth only experience or if uh, other project okay. maintainers simply Aren't on. Look, look at the uh, chat, please. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of chat. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, who developed the EDX material? I, I wish Tracy was on because I think she's closest to this. Correct. Yeah. Oh, Tr Tracy's not on, but. Um, again, I, I mean, this this is sort of why I brought up the. The whole point that I thought that we wanted to have maintainers from the various projects participating in the education training working group um, to ensure that the material is correct and current and so forth. Um, my understanding was that that was checked, you know, that, that people on the various projects were checked with. Um, uh, so far, from a fabric perspective, it's been mostly accurate. So I can't, um, no, I can't speak to that. There's been questions, and I think most of those are just people um, who are trying to do more than what was in the course and getting stuck. Yeah, I think. So is that the uh, go ahead, Devin. The course uh, that um, uh, Chris was talking about, is that the uh, IBM blockchain course on... Uh, no, it's the, edX, the, uh, the MOOC. 
Okay, there's another MOOC uh, with uh, something called IBM Blockchain in Coursera. Yes. But I'm talking specifically about the Hyperledger EDX material, which is a combination of material covering both fabric and sawtooth. Okay. Yeah, so we, we've had a couple training initiatives. One has been this, this online course and material for that was, was gathered, I think mostly over the, the summer, early fall. And that was put together, I, I, I'm not sure is, is the name of the company, EDX? Um, I think so. Wrong. Yeah, edX. Um, okay. Uh, and then subsequent to that, uh, Tracy initiated the that uh, the the training working group, and so I think that the the takeaway from my perspective is that we didn't have as much involvement from maintainers as would have been desirable in the EDX material or the edX material, and so as we're starting this training working group, it would be good if uh, it'd be good if we don't repeat that. And, and part of that's definitely going to be on the maintainers. If they don't make time and don't engage, then, you know, they, on the one hand, they don't really have a, a reason to complain. Uh, and then on the other hand, it's just going to be the pragmatics of people who are already working uh, more than full time on, on code and docs and stuff to then add yeah. another thing to their plate voluntarily is difficult. Yeah, no, I, I, I tend to agree with that, but I do think that, um, you know, that we, sh and, and this, again, this was why I was pretty adamant about my point of view on getting maintainers to actively participate in all of this, because I think it's a responsibility of all of us collectively, Hyperledger, right, that if we are going to put out training material, that it is correct, and we do our best to make sure that it is and we can't just use an excuse of, well, no maintainers got back to us, then it, maybe it shouldn't be published, right? Um, so, you know, again, I, I just think we need to be careful about, about some of this because it, uh, it, it can create problems and everybody is very busy, I get that. This is all volunteer, I get that, but by the same token, we have to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Yeah, so if, if there's something that could be done within the, the existing edX material uh, and uh, maintenance of that that makes it easy for a project maintainer to go in and sort of see an outline at a glance, you know, not have to like sit there for a 60 hour course to see what's there. Right. Um, <laughs> I've been asking for the same thing. So, that yeah, so that would be great. Was, yes. Yeah, and then to the same uh, to the same extent with the the upcoming uh, training working group, if there's like a digest version of the material that uh, the maintainers can review, that that lowers the bar and, and increases their engagement. I'll, I'll make a note to have Tracy reach out and um, kind of get to the bottom of this and figure out that there's a good plan for moving forward. Okay, great. And if uh, if possible to reach out to the the sawtooth maintainers at, at large and not me specifically <laughs> sounds good yeah i mean i see in the code currently i see the code for the training but not the course material maybe i'm wrong about that but um i think we need both right we need to be able to see the actual and, and we should be able to drill down if somebody posts, like for instance, I was asking previously um, of Tracy. So, okay, so I have some um, Stack Overflow questions that are coming in on one of the, you know, one of the apps, but I don't know what the course material says. I haven't taken it. Um, I haven't had time. And uh, so I don't know what it's saying to people and I can't tell whether or not they're being misled or I, I think in most cases I've sussed out that basically they're trying to take the example further than the, the, the course, you know, um, so coloring outside the lines and then they get stuck or they, they run into trouble. But um, it would be good if we could actually look at the co course material to see if, you know, if they're being misled or not. But, I, you know, not having the ability to sort of drill down and say, oh, there's that, that sentence is incorrect, it should say X. 
and being able to submit a pull request, um, I think, you know, Dan, to your point, creates a bit of a problem. Yep. Okay, well, thanks for, uh, thanks for that. And then uh, that's, I think that's it for the, the Sawtooth update. Unless anybody has any questions that I'm happy to answer. So uh, when will be the listed for Sawtooth 1.0? Is there any plan date? The uh, the official release date for 1.0, I guess the to keep the the uh, the marketing announcements uh, impactful, we're not supposed to disclose that exact date, but uh, you can consider it imminent. As they say, real soon now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, yeah. it will be very soon. Yeah. Um, they they send out press releases that go under embargo so that they all get released on the same date and that there aren't like leaks. Okay, so it, it will be in the first uh, quarter, right? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Dan. Any other questions? All right, thanks. Unless anybody else has questions, but if not, then I think we can move on. Uh, oh, nuts, I lost my uh, agenda. Here we go. Uh, Aroha? So is somebody on from Aroha to? Um... Um, yes. So I'm uh -huh. I hear a voice, but it's very faint. Um. Okay, let, let me try to improve it. So is it better now? Uh, a little bit. Can others hear? Um, well, I'm not sure if I can improve it uh, at the moment. So, well, I, I'll try to do the best. Okay. Yeah, just speak up. I, you're, you're coming in better now. Okay, so... Um, so Iroha project is quite active. So uh, we are working towards a preliminary release 1.0, uh, which is expected to be in April. Um, so right now we have a, an internal feature freeze. So, and uh, we're working uh, well to improve the reliability, uh, to improve the performance and uh, usability so that, uh, for example, the error messages are more clear for the users. Um, so, um, as for uh, community, uh, there are some issues, uh, well, for the, like, answering the questions and so on, but uh, we have some internal changes uh, to improve that. So, we're also working towards improvement of uh, community management. Um, as for uh, project issues, uh, so uh, we have a sonar cube uh, working to analyze our project. Uh, we're improving the metrics. Um, so the main issue was the test coverage. So uh, well, there are some issues with the like setup of the coverage. So it's uh, it may it may not show the exact numbers. So we're also uh, working on that. Um, so and uh, we also. Uh, we'll improve the coverage metrics by introducing the integration test framework, uh, which will allow uh, easy testing of both uh, transaction and query pipelines. Uh, so, as for, in general, as for uh, expected, expected features, uh, which we're working on now are multi-signature transactions, uh, the shared model library, which is uh, usable in Java and Python. And then push-based uh, notifications for clients. So uh, this, so a good uh, elaboration on this was made on uh, Lisbon Hackfest, uh, where uh, I have met uh, people from uh, uh, Caliper project. So uh, we have uh, gathered better uh, requirements for that. And uh, so I think that's basically it. So it's it covers uh, the most of the project update, which is available on Hyperledger Wiki. 
So uh, if there are any questions, please ask. Hi, Andre. Yeah, this is Chris. Just um, clarification, you have maintainer diversity here. You said four new maintainers were added. Um, are they all from Suramitsu or? Um... Uh, yes, so the, the four new maintainers are from Suramitsu. Anything about uh, current projects, uh, uh, external um, projects like similar to what Dan was talking about, like for uh, provenance with sawtooth, similar to that, is Iroha involved in any, I mean, I, I didn't go read details of the, uh, of what's there in the wiki page, but uh, is that presented? Oh, so, sorry, Whipin, I, I don't think I got the question clear. Could you uh, maybe... Uh, yeah, Vipin, there was some background noise cutting you off. Concrete projects in um, involving Iroha in any, um, in a commercial setting. Oh, yeah, so... Uh, well, I, I guess my colleague can elaborate on that, so I'll give a word to him. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, I know uh, about uh, one new project. Uh, it's a company, CAC, uh, from Japan. Uh, they worked on uh, insurance program and uh, use uh, Iroha like uh, storage for, for their purposes. Thank you. Any other questions for Andre? Uh, just a follow up on the earlier maintainer question. Are, are all of the maintainers from Soramitsu? Uh, yeah, yes, so all, all the maintainers are in the Russian team of Soramitsu. Okay. And then as far as your contributor diversity, uh, are you seeing contributions from outside Soramitsu or or all the contributions also from there? Uh, no, there, there were contributions from uh, all outside and uh, we have seen people working on a snap package. So this uh, Snapcraft package, which is used in Ubuntu. Great. Any other questions for Andre? Okay, thank you. So I, I think, Andre, you know, the the sort of the, the feedback that I think you're hearing is that it would be good if the team can work to try to grow that diversity. Um, uh, you know, again, it's it's one of the more challenging aspects, but I think, you know, certainly reaching out to either maintainers on some of the other projects or, um, you know, maybe Tracy to get some ideas about how to go about doing that would be, um, would be good. Yes, sure. Like we are uh, like looking towards some uh, more external interaction and uh, mm -hmm. community. Yeah. Yep. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, there's various strategies for for going about you know doing that, um, uh, and it it does take time, right? Um, just uh, like I said, I think you know you probably if you chat on you know Rocket Chat with others, um, you know or if you have people coming in and starting to use the platform, that's a good source of, you know, potential new contributors. So, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, next up is discussion of the working group reporting uh, process draft. So um, Tracy's provided us with uh, three links here. One is the overall process, which is very similar to the project reporting process page that describes how you create a, a template and so forth. Um, uh, then she's got the actual template itself, which I think is the part that we should probably discuss. And then the schedule um, for the um, 
for the updates is in there. So I suggest that maybe we uh, we all take a look at the um, the template itself, which I'll paste in chat. Oh, Todd already beat me to it. Thanks, Todd. Um, so uh, I'll I'll play Tracy here and and just sort of walk through all the different pieces. It's very similar to the project reporting. Um, uh, some differences in terms of, uh, you know, maintainers and committers and, and so forth, but other parts of it are fairly similar. So the first part is um, obviously specify which working group this is, um, a description uh, of sort of the, uh, the chair's perception of the health of the working group, how things are going, people showing up for calls, are they having calls, right? Um, what are any issues outstanding? Um, yeah, you know, can't get people to come, can't keep people away, can't beat them off with a stick, whatever. Um, uh, you know, so identify any concerns or issues that the working group has that the TC should know about. Um, a discussion of the progress on the various work products. Um, and then just sort of generally discuss and, you know, uh, the, the activity that's gone on for the past quarter. Um, uh, any things that uh, were released, any things that are amended and so forth. Um, current plans for the next quarter. Uh, and then diversity statement, just like with the projects, you know, do we have a healthy diversity of participants in the working group? Um, the working group scope, I thought as, you know, um, this, this, you know, this point here has the scope of the working group changed since the original charter, and if so, how? That would be a red flag to me because the that should be something that's brought to the TC of TSC rather uh, before um, uh, beforehand. Uh, as a change in charter and scope should probably be uh, directly brought up and not just made as part of a, a work group report, but. Uh, that said, and then, you know, again, as before, any additional information. So thoughts on the the, uh, the template? Yeah, I, I agree in particular on the, the scope. Uh, I think we should probably just strike that. So it's not suggested that the, the work group would just sort of willy-nilly change its scope. Uh, I think for me, one of the important aspects of, mm -hmm. of this regular reporting is to drive progress along scope. I think that that some of yes. the the frustrations with with working group participants has been that it it can be hard to make forward progress and something like this helps drive that that forward progress, mm -hmm. which I think you can only get if you're you're actually focused on what the work products or uh, mission of that yeah. that working group is. Any others? Or no? Bawa. So this really comes down to um, the, the template is really basically three things. Um, one is um, kind of the working group health and issues. You know, what's the current status? Um, two is um, uh, movement towards kind of plan deliverables. And then three is community. Um, can we just simplify this down into those three? Do we need to have it broken out into the, all these different sections? I'm looking at something, you know, it'd be nice to be able to have three or four paragraphs rather than a, a document that's going to take a couple hours to put together. I, I think, you know, your point, Mick, I, I think you're right. You know, we could likely consolidate this. I mean, coming back and saying, okay, let's, you know, what's, what, and, yeah, what's the help, for example, cover and overview any issues that you have? Okay, how are you making progress towards the deliverables you um, uh, claimed in your in your um, charter? Um, and, then, and then how's your community doing? Yeah, right. Maybe yeah, I could see that. Maybe we also want to add like a brief spigeon about what your plans are for the future quarter. But yeah, I think that's about right, Nick. Yeah, I, I agree with Hart's addition there. What have you accomplished? And then what do you have in progress or plan to accomplish?
Well, I, I totally agree with the idea and uh, actually for the China tech, Technical Working Group, we uh, already keep the monthly re, uh, re, reports for the passing past a year. Mm -hmm. So Chris, if we um, start a new quarterly uh, working group reporting, would you like to uh, ask to convert the monthly report to also to the quarterly one? Uh, oh, absolutely. I think the China Working Group should be a, a part of all of this, yes. Okay. And you're, you know, the China Technical Working Group is in, uh, you know, in the schedule. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, just sort of uh, summarizing and then maybe linking to the past three uh, monthly reports would be. Appropriate. Okay, I suppose the idea. Any other thoughts? Okay, so I think there's sort of general agreement then to simplify this a little bit into the the four categories that Mick and Hart suggested, and uh, I guess we can ask Tracy to to go back and after listening to the feedback to simplify. Other than that, I think, any other comments, concerns? Uh, also, our thanks to Tracy for putting it together initially. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Then I think we're at end of job. Thanks, everybody. And um, we'll talk at you all next week. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.